More than just coincidence You look around and see The earth, the moon, the sun and the sky A beautiful creation of Allah So how could you deny? How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to our show The Philosophy of the Islamic Law And we are glad as always to welcome Professor Muhammad Naim Sa'i The Professor of the Islamic Law in several American universities In the School of Sharia uh, Professor Muhammad uh, Let me take you back to the title of our show Hmm. This, the philosophy of the Islamic law. All right. Some people uh, might have some preservation against the word philosophy, and because they make the connections between philosophy and the Greek uh, philosophers, and they say, how come we put uh, this type of thoughts on the Islamic uh, uh, laws? So how, we, how you can address this point, how you can uh, answer this kind of preservation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina rasulullah wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma ni asaluk an taj'al hadha al-kalama kullahu khalis al-wajhik al-kareem. A'alimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na ma'alimtana wa zidna miladnu ka'ilma. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassil li amri wa ahdun uqadatan min lisan yafqahu qawli. What we have said before that I'm urging the viewers when they hear the word of philosophy to not hang around it that much. Try to focus on the meaning of it. As we explained before, we meant wisdoms, mysteries, beauties, aims, goals, meanings of this Islamic law. So we could apply whatever is good to them instead of the word of philosophy. Let, let them say the beauty of the Islamic law, the meanings behind the Islamic law, the mysteries of Islamic law issues. Or the benefits of the Islamic law. Anything they would like to apply for it, it is good as long as we are focusing on the uh, meaning of the whole episode in the whole program. Mm. So I want our viewer, inshallah ta'ala, to uh, relax and be more practical, inshallah, azza wa jal. We don't want just to uh, stick to the literal uh, things. Uh, that word or other word, use the word you'd like to have, adopt the terminology you'd like to have or to use, but let us go into the practical feed, showing our amazing park garden of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You could call that park any name you want, but it's fin the end, it's a park, it's an amazing one. Hmm. So this is the whole issue, inshallah ta'ala. MashaAllah. Um, so one of the benefits of the Islamic law is to learn something that you mentioned before, that the rights of Allah uh, served the, 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 the rights of the human beings or the relationship between uh, people and each other. Give us more details how, how this can be applied B because some people would not maybe they don't understand this. How it can be my worshiping toward Allah will serve uh, others? One of the very uh, amazing uh, uh, specialty in this uh, Islamic law and its act of worshiping, even we call it the act of worshiping means worshiping God. Yes. Worshipping the Lord, the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The right of Allah, as we called it before. Yes. It is very amazing to see very clearly and very strongly that the right of the people are very involved in this section. Till in some uh, area you could see it's pure right of the people. Hmm. Even it's being put or categorized under the decision of act of worshipping. An example, the issue of charity in Islam. 
If you open any Islamic book, any Islamic law book, you could see that part of the Islamic law is under the section or the category of worshipping, as zakah, charity. And all of us, we know that charity is meant to be for needy people, yes. for people, right? Yes. How to uh, dispute this charity? Who am I supposed to pay that charity? And uh, what is the percentage of this uh, charity? Uh, how many times? All these issues is regarding at the end to serve some needy people, some poor people, uh, some people in need to get that financial help. It's financial help. Yes. It's like a special part of the uh, treasury department in Islam to serve the needy people. It's being taken from the section of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very clear and, and strong evidence that this section is to serve the other section. Other things, as we said that this uh, right of people being involved very strongly, clearly, in the section of active worshiping is a complete entity of some of the worshiping, kind of worshiping, in the section of worshiping to serve the interest of people individually or to people, people as a, a whole nation at large. The prayer of, of Janazah, the funeral the prayer. The funeral pr prayer. Right? Yeah. Yes. It's meant to be, the, they call it funeral service, right? Mm -hmm. Funeral service being... Uh, provided to that person in, in, in our American language, mm -hmm. English language. That means the janazah, that janazah funeral prayer being provided to that person, the whole service of the funeral being provided to that person. Yes. So this is like a very uh, pure service to an individual person who died, mm. who passed away. This is, you, you could find it in the section of ibadat. So how Islam make that when you are praying on someone, when you are praying for someone, when you are provide service, when you are to someone, this as if that you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. So Allah made us a part of his right. Because no one, as we know later on, the difference between fard kifaya and fard ayn, when we say that this uh, obligatory thing in Islam is to be applied uh, personally, individually, it's must. That mm. everyone has to apply it on his, in, him, in himself. Yes. And some other maybe duties or obligations or obligatory things, if, if some of the people applied it, that will be enough for the rest of the Muslim people. They call it Fard Kifaya. Mm. So this, uh, one example of this, if no one in the Muslim Ummah did bring or provide the service for that dead person, who passed away, the whole ummah, the whole nation, would be uh, held accountable. The day of judgment. Because Allah put it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the section of worshipping him. Section of his rights, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As if Allah is telling, this ummah, this nation, the whole mankind, it is my right upon you to serve your brother mm. when he passed away. It's the way to worship me when someone passed away to provide service to him, this is my right as your Lord. This is my uh, uh, way of worshiping me as your creator. So if you like to worship me, show your uh, uh, real worshipness to toward me, or showing that you are so uh, uh, anxious to protect and maintain my right, you go and provide the service to that person. Subhanallah, that um, speaking uh, which, that uh, yesterday um, my father passed away. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, inna lillahi rajaun. Inna lillahi, inna ilaha rajaun. Lillahi ma'akhadu, lillahi ma'ata. Rahimahullah. And uh, subhanallah, on our way to the masjid, to the mosque, to, uh, to make the janazah, the funeral prayer, I arrived with the, with the body first. And when I came out from the car, and I just went inside the masjid to tell the imam, please uh, wait, I have someone who's dead, I want to make the funeral prayer. The masjid, there was about two or three hundred people there. And they rush, um, some of them like uh, maybe 20, 30 people, they rushed uh, barefoot, 
yeah. running outside the masjid, competing with each other, so who cool. will carry the body from the, from the van into inside the masjid to pray on him. And that was really showing the beauty of this human civilization. Mm -hmm. The human civilization that we were talking about the last episode. That uh, nobody, they don't know who is dead. They don't know the, the, my father. They don't know me. They, don't, they are not waiting for any kind of rewards or praise for, from anybody. They did it just to, uh, to get the satisfaction and the pleas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and it was so beautiful to see all these people. And even they come, some of them came with me traveling to, to, to bury him. And they don't know me. And they don't yeah, know, don't know, they know that how much they get reward. Yes. Uh, every step they are doing in this uh, service, the more effort they put, the more reward they will get. Uh, holding the, the, the coffin or prayer, or giving the, uh, their prayer, holding the coffin, following the, the janazah, the funeral, go to the cemetery, bury him. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. So, so that really shows that this Islamic law, this uh, Allah's rights, really has a great impact on people's attitude and behavior toward each other. And I was so pleased to feel that I'm not alone. I'm not only a small family. No, I have everybody are my brothers and sisters. Mashallah. That's that's the greatness of Islam, really. Mashallah. Mashallah. By the way, just uh, for, for the viewers that uh, Brother Ahmed I told me about uh, uh, this incident of his father passing away, may Allah uh, shower him with his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, he said that one of his father wished that to continue this episode and this program for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we said let us do it let us do it inshallah for, for the sake uh, of that uh, encouragement coming from your father may Allah have mercy on him subhanahu wa ta'ala so this uh, episode to be specially inshallah ta'ala uh, for that reason may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit uh, his father inshallah ta'ala uh, and his grief by the benefit the good deeds of this uh, episode, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah, Allahum ameen. Allahum ameen. So, uh, is, is this the only, uh, like... Um... No, just, this is just one example. Mm -hmm. uh, just one issue, as we said, in Islamic uh, law system, uh, and its act of worshipping uh, section, uh, the funeral prayer. Mm -hmm. But if you go to some other things, as we mentioned before, the, the church itself, mm -hmm. if you go to some other maybe area, you could see, like, uh, something to touch the interest of the whole nation. Mm. Like funeral, does touch the benefit of the maybe individual yes. person. Uh, but even that individuality, as you mentioned before, just a little uh, time ago about how much these people, they were uh, crowded just to, to participate in this reward. Yes. So that individual interest does reflect on the whole interest of the whole people. Yes. Because every one of them, they said, if I did provide that effort to this Unknown person to me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I died, would provide the same thing to me. Yes. So now, if you go to some other area now, uh, to show how much uh, that Christian was in touch with the interest of the whole nation, you will be amazed. Yes. Subhanallah. Uh, we will go for a quick uh, break and we'll come back uh, soon. Please stay with us. How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar How can you deny the oneness of Allah? Allahu Akbar Welcome back. Uh, Professor Muhammad, you were talking before the break about the acts of worshipping that would serve um, individuals and has a reflection uh, on uh, the public or people. And you mentioned that there are even some acts of worshipping that will benefit the people or even the nation or a country, the whole country in general. Yes. Would you please uh, t give us some examples? Yes. We are still, uh, uh, Wallahi, amazing about what we are uh, talking about right now. Because I would like just to remind myself and the viewers, it is good when you have this episode from time to time to try to uh, rewatch it again and try to make this biha and say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. This is the same way you are uh, opening the page of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, the same way you are watching a program about uh, the Marine's life, uh, this fish and that kind of, of shark and 
of the government in the jungle and, and see all this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are, we are amazed because this is the, the work of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. So one of the, the other issues in the uh, act of worshipping, uh, the prayer of uh, istisqa. Like asking for rain. When people, they have a very dry weather mm. or time, and uh, especially when they expecting uh, the season the, of rain, the season of, 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 uh, of rain, they don't have it. Uh, the farmers are in, in bad, desperate need to some water coming from from, from the Lord subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala, but they don't have this. Uh, well, people in general, they don't believe in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said it's bad weather. Mm -hmm. They just describe the case. Yes. One of the Muslim philosophy, Islamic philosophy, you don't just describe your hardship. You, just, you don't just describe your, your, your difficulties in life. You try all the time to work to on the feed it. of solving mm -hmm. it. And sometimes solution of this problem could be a combination of uh, supplication and physical work. Sometimes could be just going by yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after midnight and ask him or pray to Raka or recite Quran Kareem. So Islam has uh, taught his followers, don't surrender yourself to the problem or difficulties. Mm. Always have a hope. Always you have to have a hope. So Islam has created this. If you are in that situation, you don't have enough water, enough rain to water your, your farm just as a ruler, as imam, as president, as king, as prince. Gather all the people in one plain place, in the field, no buildings, no uh, sign of, of uh, advanced maybe technology or, or, or civilization uh, and just go outside mm -hmm. of the town with the whole people and pray that kind of prayer. Prayer asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower this country, this town, this village by his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala by that kind of rain. So where, where could you see the right of Allah here in this prayer. Mm. Where could you see that the worshiping of Allah subhanahu when you are asking for some rain to water your ranch or your farm to get some fruit or vegetables or something like this. It is again and again is the real meaning of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping God the Lord. As if Allah is telling you, yes, yes, it is my right upon you. To, to shower you, to water your farm, but ask me, I will do it for you. And that at the same time, the benefits will go to the rest of the people because they will have fruits, they will have well, vegetables. This is, this is the, the, the whole idea. Yes. This prayer has been established, established mainly for that reason, mm. to benefit the whole nation. Because as I said, in America, they have like a very bad weather or bad season in California, Mm. Hmm? The whole country would be affected, right? Yes. Lettuce and tomatoes and all these things would be affected. The price will, 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 will go higher yeah. and higher because it's part of the, the country uh, does have that bad uh, weather. Mm -hmm. So it is like general benefit for the whole nation. So uh, I hope in, in, in America, Muslims uh, as a communities, they try to uh, bring back this prayer. Because as a Muslims, we believe that it is okay for Muslims. It is not just okay, it is very recommended. When they are living in the West, they are getting the benefit of living in the West. They are enjoying eating a beautiful and delicious lettuce and, and, and tomatoes and fruit. If they have something like this, to gather all the communities, go outside and ask for water, for rain mm. from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if California will be benefited, the whole people will be benefited, Muslims or non-Muslims, Christian or other people. This is Islamic uh, uh, thought, 
Islamic principle that you wish every good to everyone and everyone has to be benefited from being a good Muslim connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this again and again is a right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, act of worshipping, robbed by, by this title, act of worshipping, giving that name, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but if you go deeper and deeper, and even that the form of it is to say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, give us some of your mercy, O oh Allah, give us more rain to water our farms, our ranches, to have more fruit. This is uh, purely and clearly to benefit the whole nation through act of worshipping, through the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is another benefit uh, I can see behind it. If we uh, just, uh, the Muslims, uh, gathered uh, in an empty place and, and outside, and they, they are, like in the Eid, on Eid prayers, they are thousands and thousands. If they gather to make the Salat al sisqa in America, for example, to have more rain, that, that's by itself a great da'wah. That uh, the, the, the non-Muslim will look at the Muslims as uh, they are American. They, yes, Muslims can be American. Because we have nowadays, unfortunately, uh, people look at Muslims, even if they are Americans or from UK, once they become Muslims, they feel that they are detached mm -hmm. from their nationality. Yes. Like they are become betrayer or, or something like this. But if Muslims do something like this, it will be da'wah. This is number one, that people, Muslims, are really care for the, the benefits of their country. And something else that will at least, if people don't become Muslim, but at least will not be against them. Mm -hmm. They will feel, no, they are part of the society, part of the community, and they care so much about this community and this society for its benefits, and they work for it. MashaAllah, you are 100% right. You are 100% right, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. And uh, uh, just to uh, remind, you know, uh, our viewers that the real meaning of da'wah, calling uh, for this Islam, has been uh, uh, misunderstood uh, somewhere from some people. Some people, they believe that in order to be in the field of da'wah or to, to do something for that cause, you have to aim it this way. And you have to uh, uh, make everything possible to achieve your goal of bringing someone to Islam. I said, no, it does not have to be that way. Da'wah means you are calling for a beautiful gift of Allah subhanahu the creator, the Lord, by showing others how much you are pleased with your appliance to this Islam on yourself. Mm. You are calling for that Islam, for that religion, by your condition, not by your sayings. So try to think it this way. If I do anything in my life, the same way Allah commanded me, this by itself is a pure da'wah your calling for that Islam. If you gather yourself, as you said, going outside of the city or the town to ask for rain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't want to see, I would like or to say, or to, to, uh, to aim to bring someone to Islam. I'm, I'm doing that because Islam has commanded me mm -hmm. to spread the benefit, the beauty of this deen all around. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring someone without even thinking about this. Being nice to your neighbor, not just to, to bring him to Islam. No, you have to be nice because Islam has commanded you to be nice to your neighbor. Be mm -hmm. just and fair in your judgment. Not because you have to bring someone to Islam, because Islam has commanded you to be just and fair with everyone. This is a very important uh, way of thinking, that if we just apply it, uh, because sometimes people think that uh, Muslims have double personality. Uh, personality with non-Muslims uh -huh. because they want to call people to Islam so they are very gentle. All right. And uh, another personality with their fellow Muslims. Mm -hmm. Okay, he is already a Muslim so I feel free to act the way that I want to act with him. Subhanallah. And, and this is something that we have to address to the Muslims that they have to be nice and fair regardless who he, they are dealing with. Right. They have to apply the Islamic uh, thoughts and the Islamic rules on everybody equally. This is the, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's the, 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 exactly the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be that kind of, of virgin 
uh, very kind, uh, very uh, uh, just and fair with everyone, regardless, these people will be uh, attracted by his way of life, Ali Zassan, to become Muslims. That will be uh, bringing a, a, a very happy moment to him, to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But was not the whole issue here. The whole issue that being that person was able to attract people by his condition, by his way of applying the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So that's why, whether that his neighbor was Jew, the Prophet alayhi salam, or was a Muslim, mm. does not matter. Does not change the whole philosophy of being a good person to your neighbor. So if your neighbor in, in the UK or, or France or, or Denmark or, or USA was a Christian, and a very strong Christian, does not make any difference to affect on your application of your Islam, on yourself and on your neighbors. You have to keep that just and fair treatment to your neighbor, even if you heard from him that Ahmed or Zaid or Abid don't try even to approach me about your deen. I'm a very strong Catholic Christian. That should not affect on you or change your way of treating that person. Even it has to bring some more maybe uh, just an, an unfair treatment to that person. MashaAllah. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Professor Muhammad Naim al Sa'i before uh, we leave this uh, beautiful uh, show. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today. Uh, please visit us next uh, episode. We have more to say. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's more than just coincidence. You look around and see the earth, the moon, the sun, and the sky. A beautiful creation of Allah So how could you deny How can you deny the oneness of Allah Allahu Akbar How can you deny the oneness of Allah Allahu Akbar